Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Easy Markets Daily Pitch International with me, that is Lunchauskas. Today's the 1st of November 2023. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this new month, um, the middle of the week, uh, of course, but new month, uh, new month. Yes, uh, I hope October was uh generous to you guys um so yep uh, we'll look at the markets as always the charts um but before we go further as always um just a quick 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 read through our risk disclaimer so so uh just bear with me one moment there we go the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendations and should not be considered as such this material should not be taken as an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product Look, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest. I'll disappear from that little left corner and I'll be back in a bit. Okay, guys, so now then, um, also just before we go further, as always, just a quick mentioning of our Easy Markets website, which you can always check out for more information about us. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the... Uh, charts. Look, I said to you this in the beginning of this week on Monday that this week is going to be very, very exciting. And so far it is. Okay, maybe without major swings, but hey, let's not, you know, let's allow the party to kind of uh, run a little bit more. You know, maybe something will happen. And today, uh, midweek, uh, the first day of the month, we do have some stuff coming out. Honestly, this this day, I'm quite excited uh, because the market, everything is going ballistic. Everything is going. It's a it's it's crazy what's happening right now. Right in general, I'm not. We're not seeing major uh, shifts or anything like that. But in the background, it seems like the market is like it's trying. It's, it's sitting there like trying to catch the zen and like just like trying. No, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. You no. Know, trying to convince himself but no actually not everything is fine everything is just like honestly all over the pro the place so Nikkei 225 popping higher beautiful move here to the upside look from the technical perspective I talked about this and I said to you that if we do pop and stay above that 31,100 territory I'll go higher and if we cl clear this <clears throat> excuse me if we clear that 200 day EMA and then we will target that uh, the 50 and the 100 day EMA, the 200, if we clear the 200 day EMA, we'll go for that uh, 50 and 100 day EMA. Tick, tick, fantastic, beautiful result. Fantastic, I'm happy. Uh, now what's next? Next is uh, the force, the uh, examination of these two EMAs. And if we clear those, and yes, I'll go for further north, uh, for further northern le levels. Uh, where I'm targeting this 32,435, 563 zone, approximately around here. Good potential targets, but hey, let's not rush into things. Uh, this downside scenario here now can be lifted and this downside line can be removed. And if we were looking for some lower levels, I think a drop below this uh, 31,100 zone now, it will act as a good area of support. If we clear that, then we could go a little bit to the downside. Let me just actually... For the sake of it, I mean, for my uh, for my own OCD here, I mean, I want to uh, make these two um, uh, charts. So basically, what I'm trying to say here is, I'm kind of seeing a range here a little bit. But hey, don't get me wrong. I mean, it might not end up being one, but hey, but for sure, uh, there is a chance for having a possible possible uh, range. So uh, that's the situation here with Nikkei. Um, in terms of economic data, we didn't get much. I mean, we only got the Jap uh, Jibun Bank uh, Japan Manufacturing PMI, which came out a little bit better, but still in contraction. So it's like, yes, progress, great, but by only 0 0.2 uh, points. So yeah, so evaluate as you wish, right? But now the main the main important thing is the Japanese yen, which I will I really want to get into. But um, uh, look, I need to go through these first. Uh, so China fifty, uh, beautiful pop uh, from the technical perspective. Look, we tested my downside line. Great mission accomplished. Then I said to you that if we do clear this downside line, then yes, I will go further north. My next target is the uh, twelve thousand two hundred thirty. Everything got reached. Everything got tested. Uh, fantastic result here. Um, look, um, we got the Tizen manufacturing PMI figure this morning and, uh, well, that one did not show up as a good one, to be honest. It fell into contraction and, uh, that's something that the market does not, does not like. And, um, 
yeah, for now, <clears throat> for now, uh, what I'm keeping an eye on here, of course, is still this downside line. And now, now, uh, this 12,230. As you can see here, it acted as a fantastic area of resistance. So if we do get cl a clearance of that one, then yes, I will start examining the 50-day the EMA, the 100-day EMA, and then, then the 200-day EMA. EMA and then we'll go from there for the downside I need to see a clearance of this upside line here I get it it's a little bit on the tentative side because basically it's drawn this way but if you wish to have something here you could actually keep your eyes on this little hurdle here this 11,883 which I looked at previously as a good area of resistance which we broke nicely fantastic now we can go uh, you know and examine that one as a good area of support but for now because again depending on how this is going to shift maybe I'll I'll draw a different area of support here uh, a break of which would be needed in order to consider a move lower ASX 200 so we're pushing back up here of course uh, yesterday we saw some positive activity in the US kind of continued uh, from uh, from Monday's activity and look at this when we, we uh, were trying to climb and we're now climbing back above this 8,000 uh, 6,850 territory I said to you before that if we do uh, push above it and stay above it then yes I will consider a bit of a move here to the upside uh, a push towards this downside line drawn from the high of the uh, 15th of September so basically in other words I'm considering a larger correction to the upside here if we continue to trade above that 6850 zone somewhere around here um, of course okay look I'm I, you know I, I really want to complicate your lives with something else but you know what actually I'm gonna leave it for now here because that because we might start oscillating around this level just don't forget that because look I mean we did the same thing here so that's why I'm kind of allowing that so it's not going to be as straightforward as let's say it could be with other indices no but with this one it's always a little bit more complicated but hey we we like it as well and uh you know we, we don't forget that we we might start oscillating so this is where you will have to test your nerves a little bit and patience um in terms of the downside a drop below the 6745 territory would be needed here because a drop below that hurdle would confirm a forthcoming lower low the dow um and let me just quickly write it uh, in the chat room here good morning everyone this is what i uh, try to do every every morning start off the chat kick off the chat uh, chat room here but look um, if you have any questions in look I mean you can drop me a question uh, so yeah, honestly if I'll try to answer if I know the answer I'll say yes I know the answer but if I don't know the answer sorry um, yeah it's gonna be investopedia then <laughs> but uh, oh Declan Declan Dubs uh, thank you very much for the pleasant uh, for nice words thank you thank you honestly like there's like extra boost for my um excitement today honestly i'm very excited i don't know like i mean the market this week is really um fascinating i mean um, and in general what's happening in the world it's madness the total madness is just like it's it let's if you want to look at me like and think why i'm smiling no it's like just like uh irony honestly it's like irony it's like uh the the world is crazy the world has gone mad and and i think it's not the end so we're, there's more madness to it so that's why i am like i said i am from the market perspective from the traders perspective it could present itself with nice opportunities from the moral side no it's a it's a tragedy it's an absolute tragedy so look um dow jones industrial average uh pushing higher pushing above that thirty-three thousand mark um we are yes we are climbing it seems like we could be climbing higher a little bit here um and i said to you that if we do stay above that thirty-three thousand territory i'll continue further north now let's not forget today we do have an eventful day and guess what um that's right you guessed it right yep 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 absolutely isi manufacturing <laughs> isi manufacturing and jolt and jolt's job openings Oh yeah, and we when we do have also the Fed yeah, somewhere there, you know, uh, with its with its interest rate uh, decision, which probably it's not going to happen. I mean, nothing will happen in there. Like they're going to keep the rate the same. They will say that they're ready to act. And uh, yeah, if by any chance we get some sort of a, a rate cut or something like that, I mean that would just explode the market to the upside, in my opinion. But again, I might be wrong here, but. I think that uh, you know we could see some positive action here in in you know to the upside, but that's only if we get a rate cut. If we get a rate rise, well, we maybe we might see the stock market actually 
moving lower. And I think that this is what, what's happening right now, what's driving this uh, kind of push to the upside. Uh, not to mention, of course, the earnings season that we're in, in right now. And uh, we do get these top uh, top boys uh, uh, re, re, kind of delivering their um, their numbers, their earnings. So look, I mean, in general, this week we already got the McDonald's. Uh, we got, um, uh, who was it? it was McDonald's, Pfizer yesterday came out uh, with uh, with crappy numbers, but that's fine. It's okay with Pfizer. Pfizer is, Pfizer is fine. Um, that's, you know, that, I mean, they will create something new, some, something else to inject into us, you know, but, uh, AMD, um, look, um, AMD came out per with good numbers, Amgen, Caterpillar, um, yep, uh, these guys came out with good stuff, um, wait, where's that? Um, it was, was it to, ah, today, today Etsy is coming out, Yum Brands today as well. Um, yeah, we have a big list today, a big list of companies coming out today. So keep your eyes on that as well. That's going to be like epic. We have, uh, we have ISM, JALTS, uh, Fed. Uh, we have the beginning of the month. We have earnings. I mean, uh, the US, I think we could, could be exploding. <clears throat> Uh, oh, Declan uh, Dubs. Uh, yeah, world is bonkers. All these opportunities in the market. Thumbs up. Also seeing a lift in the indices, depending on the Fed. Uh, one BC outlook is is up, so I think you might find some hawkish tones in the FMC string. Rattle in the market a bit. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I mean, look, as always, uh, with the with these press conferences, so far, I don't see anything like new coming out, right? I mean, and I think that this is the... I think that... Uh, we're now going into the holiday season and nobody wants to spook anybody. And I think that the rates will stay, um, of course, they will stay as they are uh, today because everybody needs to get like a little loan to buy that new MacBook, right? Uh, so, you know, and to kind of stimulate the sales a little bit. So Apple is uh, suffering a little bit because iPhone didn't go well. Um, in my opinion, but, uh, you know, now it's like, let's, let's boost the, the Christmas sales with the MacBook. Um, and for that, you know, nobody's going to buy if suddenly interest rates go a little bit higher. So that's why we well, let's keep that, you know, <laughs> of course I'm joking, of course, you know, but again, in every joke, there's a little bit of truth. Um, so yeah. Look, uh, but yeah, thank you very much, uh, Declan Dubs, for the comment. I mean, uh, that makes sense, of course, of course. Um, let's see, let's see how it comes out. Now, uh, Dow Jones, like I said, yeah, for me, that's the situation here. If we do continue to trade, from the technical perspective, if we do continue to trade above that 33,000 uh, mark, then yes, I'll continue aiming to the upside. For the downside, well, um, ooh, I mean, for the downside, I have this 32,400 zone, and I get it. It's a big area to miss out on, but to be honest, if it drifts lower, for example, find some support somewhere here in the midpoint here, and then kind of reverses back up, then it's just going to create a higher low. So that's why my downside scenario is from around here. In, uh, in order to kind of see a, higher, uh, a lower low, you know, in order to be a little bit more confident with that. S&P 500. Uh, S&P 500 is, mm, yeah, it's pushing uh, to the upside as well. Everything's fine. Yesterday, let me just double check. I think the, the NASDAQ was the best performer, then followed. Ah, no, no, sorry, 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 sorry. I'll take my words back. S&P was the best performer. S&P followed by NASDAQ and then Dow. Um, so, yeah. Um, we're seeing a nice reversal here. So, so far, look so good. I said to you that I'm very, I'm going to be very conservative on this one. I'm just going to allow this all room for maneuverability because I really don't like it. Like, like to play it this way. Um, if we do climb back above the 4,235, I'll consider a larger correction to the upside towards this downside line. But for now, I need some sort of um, like sideways activity maybe in order to determine what I'm going to wear, you know, if there's a level somewhere uh, closer um, to consider. So at this point, I'm just leaving it. Um, and that's why I'm, I have my targets here that for the downside, 4,122, for the upside, 4,235. And I'm talking about the future here because these are um uh, you may, you might be trading the cash indices so just kind of double check on your charts but basically uh they're similar in, in a way so you know uh, you can keep an eye on your charts on your levels as well just uh you know and uh, cross-referencing them with my chart here 
Uh, NASDAQ, so there we go. We're climbing a little bit higher here, but back above the 200-day EMA. So I'm a little bit more positive than NASDAQ. Um, and uh, yes, I'm going to consider a larger correction to the upside as long as we remain above the 14,460 territory, somewhere around here together with this 200-day EMA. If we remain above that, great, I'll consider a move higher. In terms of the downside, now this is where I want to adjust here a little bit. Uh, so Ah, okay. Look, in general, I do still like this level, this uh, 14,250. Yep, I still do. Um, but I think that we might also uh, consider something maybe around this, uh, this short term uh tentative, very tentative upside support line drawn from the low of the um, 26th of, of, of October, basically the lowest point of October. So if we do clear that one, then this may also help us out in terms of examining the downside. Look, I said it already before, um, keep your eyes today on the uh, economic data uh, before the Fed, because again, um, we we have the um, the ADP non-farm employment change coming out today. Uh, by the way, just a quick reminder again with the ADPs, um, I know I you probably heard me saying it like a hundred times already uh, that, um, look, uh, the ADP is not a gauge for NFP. So don't kind of really look at it as like, oh, the NF ADP came out, let, let's say higher, NFP is going to come out higher. No, that constantly, it, they're not correlated. Um, it's good to look at it. We, it's good to capture like the market reaction after that number because like uh, everybody's also like speculating but then the market settles down it makes room for um the next data set which is the ism manufacturing pmi that's coming out of uh like uh how what's the time here i mean it's coming out like an hour 45 later together with the jolts numbers and crude oil inventories Yep, and then like after like three hours or something, yes, three hours, we get the FOMC uh, interest rate decision. Um, and then followed by uh, half an hour later, it's gonna be followed by a uh, press conference. So yes, uh, let's see how all this is gonna play out. Um, just bear with me one moment. Let me just adjust the timing here a little bit. There we go. What time is it right now? Yeah, that's the one. Um, so. Coming back to the uh, to the instruments here and the C's. So yeah, that's my game plan on on the Nasdaq, DAX, the German index DAX. Um, looking at the picture here. Look, yesterday we got the preliminary CPI figures that came out from mm, from the eurozone, but the market okay they did react initially but then kind of uh we saw a euro dollar kind of squeezing uh not squeezing but like falling to the downside moving to the downside a little bit uh but of course looking at this picture here we can see that the dax is is climbing higher look I talked about this yesterday. If you remember in my yesterday's morning video, I said that if we do climb and stay above that 14,871 territory, I'm gonna consider a move to the upside a little bit more here. First, initially towards that psychological 15,000 mark, we're getting close to that. And then maybe this um, this 15,066 zone somewhere around here. But look, look, let's go slowly, step by step. Don't not, let, let's not rush. So that's gonna what I'm gonna aim for initially. In terms of the downside, in order in order to consider a move lower, I need to see a drop below the 14,733 territory. Then, yes, we could go to the downside. FTSE 100, there we go. Pushing nicely to the upside. And uh, as well, following basically following the herd, in my opinion. But, okay. Uh, I think the action will come tomorrow. Oh, by the way, I have to say something uh, bad in my, in my, uh, in my address because yesterday I said that there's, ah, there's nothing much, inter not much interesting happening with the pound. So then this week, so, you know, no, uh, tomorrow, Fe um, BOE, uh, BOE is coming out, Bank of England, uh, within its interest rate decisions. So, so yeah, silly me. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm saying. Watch out for tomorrow action for and everything what's related uh, to uh, Britain um, yes that's gonna be an interesting moment there and uh, today like I said today we'll see some uh, action here in the in the FTSE because of the US tomorrow uh, they have their own uh, stuff cooking in the kitchen in their kitchen so uh, yes uh, I will say I would say 
that um, if you're looking for some higher levels, then certainly a push above that 7,400 territory would be needed for the downside. I will start looking at some lower levels if we do fall below the 7,326 territory right here. US dollar. There we go. Bo -bo -bo Boom. Uh, look at this madness. Honestly, that's what I'm saying. This is like it's madness right now. It's like everything is technical and not. This is the thing. So it's like, look, it kind of remained above that my downside i said to you like yesterday if we continue to trade above that downside line then yes this is like what i'm going to consider and it's kind of yeah okay like you know let's drop lower and like we we broke the downside line everybody probably started jumping in but uh look i said to you as well keep your eyes on that 105.75 territory and look how well that acted as a good area of support boom so fantastic beautiful uh beautiful rebound from that hurdle so that's why it's becoming like that level to watch and uh uh yeah yeah declan do declan doves yeah yeah boe is expected to keep the, the right the, but this is the thing um they are expected to do so right and this is where the, the, the interesting bit uh thing is that what they will do will they have the mind of their own or will they actually uh go on and uh you know what go for a rate hike why i'm saying this let me just actually uh yeah before i I'll keep the dollar chart on the on this one for now, but I just want to jump in very quickly to that topic which you're uh, which you're, uh, which you just mentioned, uh, Declan Dubs. Um, so where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Where's that? Uh, Bo? Where's that rate? So yes, five point twenty five. Um, last time they uh, the expectation was for uh, a rate hike during the last meeting and what they did they came out as previous they didn't go for a rate hike and uh, basically it was a surprise now this time there is no expectation for a rate hike so it's expected to come out the same at 5.25 but um, if depending on how you know the rhetoric, rhetoric will go from the Fed, maybe they will follow suit and say, you know what, we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna raise rates for now because this is for the same reason uh, that we need to lift our boost our sales a little bit more, you know, because it's the holiday season and stuff like that. Um, and the and, and and you know the economy is kind of uh, still holding on, but that's from the U.S. perspective because inflation in there is declining slowly. In the in UK, inflation still sits at what 6.7, 6.7. So the target is uh, the BOE's target is two percent. So it's two percent, and uh, we are at 6.7. So it's like triple, like a little bit more than triple, right? Um, and uh, <laughs> so the question is actually, will they go for a rate hike? Because just bouncing purely off inflation, saying that you know what inflation is uh, is bad we need to bring it down doesn't matter we'll take a hit on the holiday season but we need to bring inflation down so because uh, they're afraid that maybe actually the all the sale all the sales will kind of boost uh mm, inflation further yeah you know after the holidays and everything and we'll see that you know inflation is like ridiculous so that's what i'm saying so just let's uh see of course let's wait so I wouldn't be surprised if there is like a 25 basis rate, uh, 25 basis point uh, rate hike. Uh, but again, I'm, I don't want to, uh, you know, play the Nostradamus. I'd rather wait for the number to come out and then just kind of do something about it. So coming back to the US dollar, look, so far so good. Uh, we are pushing higher. Um, housing market is in much worse shape than other areas. Um, in which way? Declan Dubs, in which way is it worse? Uh, I mean, I, I understand for myself, but just like I want to hear your, uh, in which way is it worse? Like in terms of you're talking about uh, that demand seems to be still somewhere there, even with uh, the uh, like uh, interest rates rising. But again, um, in which way? What What do you think? What do you think? Um, so coming back to US dollar very quickly. So look, we're getting a hold up near that 106.57 territory. That's fantastic. Good, fantastic, strong area of resistance. It, it helps us a lot because if it gets cleared, the next target is the 107.05 territory right here, marked by the uh, highest point of October. And if that gets cleared, a forthcoming higher high will be confirmed. Fantastic. Now, jumping into gold, uh, beautiful. Look at this, mission accomplished. I am relaxing now. Um, well, I wish, of course. Uh, but no, look, in general, look at this madness yesterday. Ba-boom. It drifted a little bit higher. Test almost came to that uh, highest point of October. Um, almost wanted to see uh, falling prices. 
falling prices in for what for the house for the housing market well yeah i mean like what do you expect like i mean interest rates are getting higher so you know uh but uh and every, that's the whole point the whole point of you know central bank kind of to increase rates is is to bring the prices down again so um yeah and i mean and i think that they're not stopping there they're not stopping there we, um look i'm 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 saying all this with a smile just because like we repeat the same stories like humankind does not learn in general. Uh we have done that all that stuff in the past as well. If you look at historic events, you know, every we're just going through the same like um uh, nonsense as always just for with a little bit of um with a different maybe uh, sprinkle of uh, spices um but it's all over it's all it's always the same case story i mean somebody wins somebody loses it's you know it's like just uh try to to kind of try to always force uh, well maybe foresee this these things a little bit um but anyway coming back to this uh story here gold fantastic beautiful result mission accomplished 61.8 percent retracement of the fibonacci i got that uh yesterday was a massive decline here so hey what's next uh what's next well first of all i want to get rid of this fibonacci no longer needed uh, and actually i'm going to reuse it i'm going to recycle it always recycle guys um and this give puts me closer to this bigger uh fibonacci that i've drawn here in the beginning of this week and then i said look i'm not gonna complicate life too much first let's examine the short term uh short term picture and there we go we reached my everything what i needed so now if let's say this continues to slide my next target is the 23.6 percent retracement on the fibonacci which is not far from this uh, 1962 territory good potential target let's wait and see <clears throat> i will consider some higher levels on gold again if we do pop back above the 1997 territory right here and then we will take it from there silver is yes is also not feeling very well of course also the stronger dollar uh helped out here gold and silver to move lower so but the thing is that um it's working out nicely because i said to you that if we do fall below the 50-day ema here below all of my emas i will consider a move towards this upside support line drawn from the low of the 22nd of june which got we got which was violated a few times as you can see here but i still like it it's a, it's, it's a good potential target if that gets cleared of course yes i'll go further and further south but um for now just i'm gonna aim for that one and then i'll take it from there for the upside i need to see a push back above all of my emas that's my simplistic approach here on silver oil this one continues to slide that's fine i mean look the, if everybody's thinking like oh but there's a conflict in middle east the supplies are still okay. Saudis are not uh, somewhere in the middle there, but they're okay. Um, everybody's oil, you know, they're they're still exporting, so there's no shortage. There's no shortage of oil. Everybody's exporting. On the contrary, it seems like um, you know, if you want to continue playing war, um, you cannot play war with like higher oil prices, right? I mean, that's like that's for after. That's for after the war. I mean, you know, you you need. Uh, if if suddenly let's say i don't know like there are big explosions in aramco uh, which is the main oil exporter of, of uh, saudi arabia then we could see some sort of like you know oh oil price jumping back up and you know because then the supply would be uh, a little bit damaged you know and, or could be damaged but but for now everybody's still exporting everybody's like you know like playing uh, you know playing this game so we live in the in a in a cruel and uh, vicious world, and uh, and everything revolves around money. Doesn't matter, you know. So that's why I look at it from this perspective. Unfortunately, you know, like this is like I said, that's the world we live in. Everything revolves around money, and at the moment, everything is yes, everything is going. Uh, oil is going to the downside. I think again as well. Um, we need to support the whole holiday season, you know, in Western countries as well. So, um, yeah, you know, with higher oil prices, you know, spending uh, uh, spending will not happen in shops and stuff like that. Because, you know, if, if people have to pay more money for petrol and, and diesel to get to work, then they will say, you know what, let's not buy this uh, MacBook this year, right? I mean, let's, let's buy it next year. Uh, you know, uh, or maybe when oil prices uh, go down a little bit. So, yeah. yes, there we go. Uh, oil prices are going lower a little bit. So that's OK. So I think. <coughs> oh, excuse me. 
So yeah, um, look, for now, from the technical perspective, everything's looking quite bearish. Uh, we dropped below my 81.74 territory. We dropped below the 200-day EMA. Fantastic. Uh, we're looking for some lower levels. My next target, of course, is the psychological 80, 80 dollar mark. Um, and then I will aim for that 77.60 territory. And then we'll go from there. Um, corn. Corn is resting nicely on this um, on this um, upside line. So I kept on talking about this one. And uh, yes, after we reached my target here, because I said that if we do fall back below this 500 zone, then yes, I'm aiming for this upside line. Tick, tick. Uh, now the question is, can we see... Uh, let me get rid of this arrow. Uh, now we can see if we can see this break of this upside line, then yes, my next target will be this area somewhere near this 462 60 approximately around there but again a break of this upside line is required for the upside well for the upside this is where i, I do like that 500 level still but maybe just maybe i don't know if it's going to work out or not maybe this downside line could be something interesting because maybe at the same time we could break above that 50-day ema which would let's say co could potentially coincide with this downside line uh you know good poten potentially potentially but for now i mean look i'm watching this one i'm i i like uh corn and uh, i do like these exotic uh, commodities they do present themselves with nice opportunities sometimes they work out sometimes they don't but hey like everything uh bitcoin cash very quickly on this one so we're we drifted back below this downside line so Look, it's a little bit of a mess here. I think I will need to adjust a few levels here. So first of all, we drifted back below this uh, this downside line, back below this 249 zone, and everything so far so good because this is what I said before. That uh, that's why my arrow has been shifted here. So now I'm gonna target this upside support line drawn from the low the 10th of June, and then yes, um, and then we will see. Um, we will see um if we can i actually go further south well to be honest uh, sorry i just stalled there a little bit but um look for now uh for the upside i think that a push back above this 249 territory could be ideal could be a great move here towards the 269 to 270 territory and then we could go further north for the downside um <clears throat> For the downside, um, again, like I said, for now, I'm e aiming for this upside line. But if that gets cleared and we fall below this highlighted zone near the 225 territory, I'll go lower. Uh, Litecoin. Uh, so far, this is still holding above this downside line. So it's above that 50-day EMA. So it's kind of, I can see that the bulls are fighting. Uh, but uh, to be honest, uh, I would prefer to see a push above the 70.66 territory, somewhere around here. If that gets cleared, then yes, my next target is the 200-day EMA. Uh, for the <clears throat> for the downside, a drop. You know what? I'll actually okay. I'll extend this downside line a little bit more. Although it got violated a little bit more, but actually I'll focus on the 50-day EMA instead. If we do drop and stay below the 50-day EMA here, um, then yes, I will consider a move uh, lower here towards my upside support line drawn from the low the 11th of September. Jumping into Forex, AUD, USD, guys. This is uh, this is the point where this downside line no longer needed, no longer valid, because now I'm just focusing on the range, on this little range we have here between roughly between the 0 0.6285 and the 0 0.6393 levels. Now, if we um, if we do clear this barrier um, and this 50-day EMA, then yes, I'll aim for that 100-day EMA. Good potential target there. Um, and then so on and so on. This is where I'm going to go, you know, further north. But um, at this point, look, I mean, I don't like it when it's in the range. So it's very, it becomes very difficult to predict here um, anything. So uh, we are, one thing for sure, what you can in a way maybe utilize is the, um, is the midpoint of this range. So somewhere around here near the 0 0.6337. So as you can see so far, this area is providing good support. If we do drop and stay below it, then yes, I'll consider a move towards the lower side of the range. If we continue to trade above this area, then yes, there is a chance to move towards the upper side of the range, towards that, also towards that 50-day EMA. So that's something to keep in mind, um, just to, to just to be clear. Uh, again, it might be a bit of a roller coaster ride, so that's why I don't like this uh, too much. So I'm just waiting for a clearance through one of these. Uh, areas first and then I'll take it from there. AUD and ZD. 
fantastic look at this beautiful thing honestly i talked about this yesterday and said to you look if we do drop below and stay below this 1.0899 territory uh we did stay and i said that my next target will be the 23.6 percent retracement on the fibonacci fantastic look at this perfect move honestly beautiful now oh no oh, i like it when it works out like that honestly uh, look in general we did get some data <clears throat> from new zealand uh this morning uh let me just double check very very quickly um so we got the unemployment figures and the labor participation numbers um so the unemployment um oh what's happening here just bear with me one moment guys uh yeah that's fine so we got that number we got the um unemployment number came out the same at 3.9 actually um the market didn't like that um and labor participation did decline did decline labor costs uh, increase uh, declined as well so so yeah in general bad numbers from australia oh sorry from australia from new zealand um but um i can see that the um then the australian numbers came out job judo bank australia manufacturing pmi came out better a little bit um okay look uh then we saw the governor uh, rbnz governor uh or speaking so this is where the action came in okay look they, it kind of helped boost the morale of um new zealand let me just actually double check <clears throat> uh double check this actually i think this is some some mm, this is what i missed i think that yeah i i missed um ev dollars uh yeah uh, okay so uh so they have another they're scheduling another final meeting uh, of the year in the month uh, after leaving borrowing cost and change so okay look uh yes so they're gonna have another meeting so maybe they this is where they said that maybe they're gonna increase rates again but i don't see why but um i don't see the logic why um <laughs> declan dubs thank you very much uh have a good night <laughs> <laughs> thank you. uh have a good night i sleep well and uh, you know get back you know get back fresh into the market of course everybody needs to sleep uh for sure so for sure i'll see you here next time maybe tomorrow who knows um look so yeah coming back to this from the technical perspective i would say this way that 1.0899 territory i'm again looking at it um i'm considering another move lower as long as we remain below this territory not saying that all the way towards that 23.6 although it would be interesting but um maybe a little bit lower here so as long as we remain below the 1.0899 zone um in terms of the upside i need to see a push above the 1.0925 zone somewhere around here in order to start examining higher levels aud cad so there we go beautiful retracement yesterday i said to you that look if we stay somewhere above the 108 ema or this even this 1.0.8745 territory then yes there is a chance for a move back to the upside well we did just lower lower we almost tested the 100 day ema so great we rebounded and we uh kind of for will we push higher look at this point i'll leave it i want to leave it a little bit because i want to see if we can get like a, a a better retracement here a little bit and then we could go maybe to the upside so at the moment i'm just observing this uh, if we in order to consider lower levels then uh a break of this upside line would be needed and a drop below the 0 0.8745 territory would be required as well adjpy uh ba boom japanese yen fantastic move, movement here yesterday depreciated against across the board honestly like uh and i'll i can't wait to jump in jump into uh actually i can't wait to jump into chf jpy but look um this one fantastic move i said to you before that if we do pop and stay above the 95.83 territory yes i'll go further north and uh so far i'm gonna stick to that game plan as long as we remain above that hurdle if we start pushing back down okay maybe a bit of a retracement here could be possible but i'll get more excited with the downside if we do fall below the 50-day EMA here and uh, below this 94.91 uh, zone and then we will take it from there um CHF JPY nothing and it's like why I wanted to pick up on this one because it's a battle of safe havens CH CHF is also a safe haven and it's also not feeling very well 
lately. Uh, but of course, still feeling a little bit stronger than the Japanese yen. So look, uh, so far I can see that the 50 day EMA is providing fantastic support. So that's why this breakout here below that 50 day EMA could do the, the trick for a few more sellers. For the upside, I need to see a push over the 166.60 zone. And I need to see the, the pair staying above that in order to go and aim for my highest point of October near the 168.43 zone. NZDJPY popped nicely. Beautiful move here. Uh, we pushed above the 80, 88 zone. I talked about this and I said that if we do stay above that 88 zone, then yes, I'll go further north towards my 88.90 territory and then we will take it from there. Um, look, in general, um, I think that if you're looking for some uh, maybe lower levels, then you could keep an eye on this hurdle here first, this uh, 88.60. That, you know, that could be, I think, a little bit more realistic level first. And then we will go further. So at this point, yes, I'm going to consider that. Um, in terms of the downside, I would say a fall back below the 100-day EMA, wherever it's going to be, uh, could in a way signal a maybe a move towards lower levels, towards that 86.78 zone, and then we will take it from there. Uh, USD JPY, uh, there we go. Beautiful move here to the upside. So th this is where we will be watching the BOJ eventually, because again, it has to intervene, uh, it has to move in. Um, but now the question is for me, will we reach that 152, or should I say the area slightly below the 152 territory near the 151.95? which is the highest point of October of 2022. So uh, for now, uh, it seems like this could be a nice good target because we already kind of came very close to that. So why not to test it? Why not to test it? Why not to create a new high? And this would be even more interesting, you know, for the for the buyers. However, I would I would caution this is where I would normally I say whenever you clear a previous high or something, then it opens up the door towards higher levels, but not when it's like this. Not when it's like this, like this. Maybe this is going to end up being a double, double top here or something like that. But now, like I said, we are at a very important area. Uh, let me just double check the. Uh, okay, we don't have this here. Let me just um, JPY. Where's that ice? Uh, there we go. So uh, this is where I wanted to show you. So basically, uh, last time we were. Um, you know, above that um, level, above that um, highest point of October of 2022, was back here and back in uh, 1990, guys, in April 1990. So what happened a few months after that? We had a crash. We had a market crash. And uh, yes, of course, everybody was jumping into the yen. So at this point, look, um, this looks very interesting. If we can clear it, um, yes, maybe the 160 territory could open up. <clears throat> but do not exclude a possibility for a a retracement at some port of some sort um and then yes maybe you know we could see a double a double top here uh but again if you look at the monthly chart the double top with a neckline near the 128 i mean it would be a little bit bad to miss out and then just say oh you know what i'll consider my lower levels from around here no that would be absolute madness that's why we will jump into the daily instead and we will start examining lower levels let's say if we sharply fall somewhere below this little hurdle this 148.75 zone again a, i will start maybe looking at some lower levels if we do push back below the 150.77 zone right here um but for now the question is can we uh reach uh, let me just go back into my chart can we reach uh, this 159 51.95 zone right there and then we will take it from there i want to see what's going to happen here if we suddenly yen buying will you know come in so that's why for now i am yes i'm being very very careful with this one but at the same time very very exciting usd cad so we're near this barrier near the 1.3880 um i need to see a pop again above that in order to go further north i said to you that uh yesterday so so far so good so if we do get that move great uh, but if we do start falling back below the 1.3862 from here um i will consider a correction to the downside i don't want to spend too much time on usd cad but basically that's the game plan on on this pair for me
a USDCH chef, beautiful pop. Look at this. I mean, I talked about this yesterday. I said that if we do remain above the 38.2, my next target is the 50% retracement on the Fibonacci and then maybe 61.8. But I kind of really didn't expect the move towards the 61.8. I was expecting towards the 50%, but not the 61. But look how well it played out. I mean, just bang on and fantastic hold up. So if you're looking for some higher levels now, yes, a push above that 61.8 is needed. Um, and then my next target will be the 78.6. And now this is the point where I'm not going to remove the Fibonacci. I still like that 78.60 level. So for that one, I need to uh, wait for a pop up of the 61.80 first, and then we'll go from there. For the downside, actually a drop below the 38.2. That's what I need to see here uh, in order to consider uh, some lower levels. Uh, GBP and ZD, boom, fantastic. I talked about this guys yesterday and I was, we were hugging this downside line and said, look, for my downside scenario, I need to see a drop below the 2.0736 area and below these two EMAs, the one, the 50 and the 100. We, did we get that? Um, no, we got a little tease here and then we reversed back up and look at this. We had a beautiful breakout. We broke the downside line. We tested the 2.0965 territory. Good result here. And uh, yes, uh, yes, I mean, uh, for now, um, the question is, can we get a break through that barrier? If we can get that break, great. More buyers here could join in. Uh, then we could start maybe targeting some of these levels, the 2.11, 2.12, something like that. Um, and then we'll go from there. So that's my, so for now, it's working out nicely. I'm cautiously, I'm a little bit more, actually a little bit more bullish than bearish, but a confirmation break above this 2.0965 territory for me is required. Required. GBP JP wide as well. Beautiful pop here to the upside. Look at this beautiful thing. Uh, we I said to you that we're in the range and we need to see a clearance of one of the sides. So we're now kind of flirting with the upper side, but we're not clearing it yet. So that's why I, I would I would strongly recommend to be a little bit more careful with this pair because we are testing the upper side of the range, but we are not kind of going through that too much. So that's why I am just cautiously bullish right now um yes if we do stay above the 183 point kind of somewhere 82 then yes i will go further north <clears throat> my downside scenario will be on a break of this lower side because i am leaving this inside of the range here i'm leaving it for the market to sort it out sort itself out uh, because I need to see a clearance of one of these sides of the range first before considering the next short term directional move GBP USDs. This one's a little bit vague, um, but again, keep your eyes on the news today because again, this is where I think the action could come here um, during the Fed uh, interest rate announcement and its press conference, especially. So just be cautious of that. So my my upside scenario is still the same. I need to see a break of this downside line and a break above the 50-day EMA. That's where I'm gonna uh, from where I'm gonna start aiming higher for the downside. Look. This arrow here is, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not, it's nowhere actually. So the way we could maybe from the short term perspective, play this one out, maybe again, don't take my word for that because again, this is not, maybe this upside support line drawn from the low of the 26th of October could do a good job here. Um, if, if that gets clear, then I'll aim for the lowest point of October near the 1.2037 territory and then we'll go from there. Euro JPY as well, something that I wanted to pick up on. So look, I said to you before that if we do drop back inside this range, there is a chance for this one to move lower and it did move lower, but then the 50 day EMA provided strong support from which we rebounded and pushed higher. So now, you know what? I want to quickly remove everything uh, and start fresh. So I'll bring back some of the levels because I still like them. So for example, this one, the 159.77 territory, we're still above that hurdle. Um, so in a way, this is kind of opening the door towards that 161 zone, which we almost reached. But um, okay, we didn't really exactly reach that one, but a good, again, good result. So I'm going to aim for that one once again. Um, <clears throat> And uh, yes, uh, oh, my voice is going down. Just bear with me one moment. <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, I'm going to aim for that 161 territory. If that gets cleared, uh, 162 is the next one. But um, while we remain above the 159.77, if we start, start falling below it, um, I'll take a bit of a neutral stand because my downside scenario actually will come on uh, on a break below the... 50-day uh, EMA, and then we could start maybe examining the 100-day EMA or even the 200-day EMA. But again, we'll get to that point if we get to this point, if we get to this 50-day EMA. <clears throat> 
Um, EuroCAD. Now, this one's a very interesting one. So this one's flirting with this hurdle, with this downside line. Look at this. I mean, we yesterday we violated it. We violated that 1.47.11 uh, zone. Everything looked very, very nice. So you know what? Now I think I'm going to bring back this level here, the 146.95. Now, if we do push again above this downside line and above that hurdle here, I will start aiming to the upside. So this was a good move, a beautiful false breakout, created a nice shooting star here, and now we're seeing a bit of a reversal. However, my downside scenario is from around here, from around this 1.4617. But then my downside scenario, if I call, if I can call it a downside scenario, is basically a larger correction to the downside towards this upside line drawn from the low of the 28th of September. So yeah, that's the game plan. And finally, Euro USD. So madness. Yes, we pushed higher. Then we drifted lower because we didn't like the uh, preliminary CPI figures. And there we go. We moved back below the 1.06. Look, I'm going to keep my 1.0. I know it's I got violated, but I'm going to keep my 1.06 territory here. If we climb back above it again, I'll consider a move to the upside again. Um, this here, I mean, my downside scenario will come from this 1.0523, somewhere around here. I know maybe some of you are looking at a little something a little bit earlier, maybe in the lines of this. 1.0560 could be a nice good area. Uh, we could from from here, we could start aiming lower targeting that 1.0522 uh, but if that gets cleared well yes i'm gonna get even more excited with the downside but like i said with the upside i'm still keeping an eye on that 1.06 zone even though it got violated but i still like it so yes if we do pop above it then yes my next target is a 50-day ema but then to get a little bit more reassurance maybe a push above this 1.0625 uh, territory could be needed in order to go further north but basically at the same time it's we have the 50-day ema right here so that's why um i want to be a little bit more on the careful side so yes i mean we have this 50-day ema if that gets cleared then yes i will go towards my 100-day ema or even the 200-day ema so that's it, guys. <clears throat> My voice is going down. Thank you very much for tuning in and watching this one till the end. Look, I, I really want to ask you one thing. Remember, it's the beginning of the month. We have uh, earnings. We have the Fed. We have a bunch of other data uh, stuff. We It's a busy week. It's a busy day. Um, so don't over trade. Uh, stay safe. Have your stop losses in place. Risk especially. Risk only what you can afford to lose. And everything will be fine. And be careful. Like I said, if you've managed to, let's say, if, if it's not going today, don't worry. We'll get the Thursdays. Uh, we'll get the aftermath, the Fed's aftermath on Thursday and uh, Friday as well. NFP is coming out. So it's a busy week. So it's a busy end of the week. Uh, second half of the week, so I would say. Uh, but yeah, it, if it's not going well today, leave it. There's always tomorrow. So, and on that, on that note, thank you very much. And I'll see you tomorrow. Six, uh, seven o'clock GMT time. Thank you very much and bye bye. Uh oh, you just broke a digital image, cursing us all to seven years of market volatility. Undo by subscribing to our channel.